introduce Tina Marie Ferguson. She's the executive director of RT Smart City and RT Certified Dementia Practitioner. She has a very unique career from architecture and designing all kinds of green buildings to expanding just an explosive art business that works with seniors of all different levels of abilities, interests, ages, etc., and makes art purposeful, makes it meaningful, makes it something more than just coloring pages and, and going to yet another sip, sip and paint night. She makes it something really meaningful. So without further ado, Tina, take it away. We're so happy to have you on the, on the event today. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Benjamin, for having me today. Um, I will tell you, I've worked with Kolsch for quite a few years down here in Phoenix, and um, and I've met the Kolsch family, and what wonderful people, and I am so blessed to um, be asked to do this today for all of you. Um, this is a, an Italian girl's dream, um, having uh, having a opportunity to just talk to the whole world without being muted. It's wonderful. Or at least if you mute me, I don't know it. Um, as Benjamin said, I am an architect. And about 11 years ago, um, my grandfather suddenly passed away. And this is my grandma and my grandpa. They were the sweetest, most loveliest couple I've ever, ever had the pleasure to be part of. Um, and grandma was a mess. And for a little Italian lady who hugged and kissed everyone she ever met, um, my grandfather's death was devastating. And the only thing that I knew to do was to do art with her. And so I would go to her senior home up in Minnesota is where I'm from. You'll figure that out sooner or later with my accent. Um, and I would sit with her and I would do art and, and I lied to her. At the beginning, I lied to her and I told her, Grandma, I need to do this for work. Will you help me paint this painting? And she would do it if she knew it was to help me. Um, and slowly but surely, when we did art, she stopped crying and she started living and telling stories and enjoying time and being present in the moment and it was a miracle and this was 11 years ago um that community uh was called chandler um uh, was called chandler place in minneapolis and about a year after i was teaching there the activity director told the entire group of activity directors in minnesota that they had an art teacher and um all of a sudden, one week, I had 10 phone calls from 10 communities all wanting to do art in Minnesota. And at the time, I owned an architecture firm. And I remember saying, how can I be an architect and be an art teacher at the same time? And my lovely husband, Shane Otmar, looked at me at the time and he said, Tina, I've never seen you like I see you when you come home from teaching the seniors. You're filled with love and joy and stories and amazing, amazing things. And, and I never did architecture again. And uh, my sweet little grandma was in my classes for at least two years, I'd say. I have lots of pieces of art around my house that I made with her. And, um, and then my other grandma, Helen, she was in my classes as well for about two years. And um, her dementia is what actually led me to all of the training that I have today as a dementia care practitioner. And um, my other training is being dementia certified, the Montessori method way, which is amazing. Um, working with folks with dementia is absolutely um, the most wonderful thing that I have ever experienced in my whole life. And you all know, it looked like from our poll, um, we had caregivers, we had some family members, and we had seniors as well. So I'm so glad you're all here. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about um, the awakenings that I've seen. When I talked to Benjamin and he said I had a half an hour as an Italian, I thought that's about five minutes in an Italian girl life. So I had to really focus on what's the most important thing to talk about? What do I want to say to the world? And I guess what I learned, if I look back on everything, is 
that art awakens people. And this is one of my lessons. It's a, a wreath lesson. And when I first did this lesson 11 years ago with a little lady named Hallie, it changed my life. What happened was, I love telling this story in person. It's not nearly as fun over the videos. But what I did was, um, I was setting up my class and one of the care providers brought this little lady down and she was in a wheelchair. And when I looked at her, she was like this. In her chair. And, I, and the activity directors, they put her against the wall in her wheelchair. And I said, why are you doing that to her? Why are you putting her against the wall? And they said, well, Hallie's been with us for two years and Hallie's nonverbal and she doesn't talk and she doesn't participate in anything that we do, but she loves to be in the room and listen to you all. And I thought that was the most ridiculous thing I had ever heard. And so I grabbed Hallie and I put her up to the table and she was still like this. And I leaned down, I got down low and I came over and I gave her all this fabric. And I said, Hallie, all you have to do is take this fabric and tie it to this metal wire. And Hallie continued to sit there like this. And she didn't breathe, she didn't talk, she didn't hum, she didn't look out from under her hair, nothing. And so I thought maybe the caregivers were right, maybe I was wrong. And so I left her there with her fabric and her hoop and I made my way around the table. And about 40 minutes into that class, the activity director suddenly stood up and said, Tina, Tina, and I thought someone got hurt or she needed my help or it was very, it was, it was, um, it wasn't normal, that sound that she was making. Tina, Tina, and we looked over and Hallie was done. Every single piece of fabric was tied onto her wreath and she was done. She was the first one done. And all of a sudden I realized that just because someone didn't do something in the past, it doesn't mean that it's not in there. And so I continued to do art with Hallie for a year. And every month she came and she s sat a little straighter and you could see her face now. She got a haircut and you could see her face and she participated every time and she never talked. About three months in, Hallie came up to me after class and tugged on my apron and she said, Oh, Tina, you have us do the sweetest things. And I was shocked that she was even talking. But then just like all true seniors, she said, but I want to do mine in pink. So for 12 months, I did art with Hallie. She started talking. She started creating. Every time I taught anything, I brought her a version in pink. Whether it be St. Patrick's Day, Christmas, whatever it was, I brought it for her in pink. And you guys, I will tell you, if you saw what I saw, if you saw a lady that for two years, they didn't do anything with her, to her suddenly making everything and doing everything and her posture was different and her voice came back and her stories and she changed, that lady changed because someone thought to ask her to come to an art class. Imagine what we all can do out there. Um, I hate talking to my screen right now because I love interaction. Um, do any of you have any stories like that or have any of you seen any miracles through art similar to that? Benjamin, can you like, can they, can you see if anyone's raising hey, their, yeah, somebody wants to raise your hand. I'm happy to call on you. You've got a cool story. Yeah. I know we got some stories out there. Oh, like, there's so, Ann, I would Lisa love Ann, to. You must have a story, Lisa Ann. You must have a story, Lisa Ann. Or Sarah, I'll bet you got a story. Or Tiffany, you must have a story. 
I'm sorry, I'm putting you on the spot here, poor friend. Nobody? Wife, keep thinking about it. Keep thinking about it. If yeah. You story, just chat it in or raise your hand. I'm Italian. We're used to interrupting each other. So if you come up with a story, like let Benjamin know and he can cut me off at any time. Um, so that's Hallie's story. Learning about Hallie um, early on in my career um, doing art with seniors was so beneficial to me because then I suddenly realized that anyone can be an artist, anybody. And I started going into the buildings, especially in the memory care buildings, and I, and I started telling them, bring me the ones that don't do anything. Bring me the ones that you don't think will do it. Bring me them because those are the ones that we need to awaken. And those are the ones that we need to find. And those are the ones that are the miracles in all of this. And honestly, when, when they awaken, it, it just changes your life as a teacher. And, and I'm sure as a caregiver and as a family member, um, a lot of you are family members and I'm going to, um, tell my next story for you. Um, how many of you, uh, Benjamin, did we do a poll that said how many of you regularly participate in um, creative activities once a week? Did we do that poll? Oh, that would be great. I would love to see your answers to that, everybody. Um, I'm just wondering how many of you, and, and, and this doesn't mean you have to be good at it, but how many of you try to do something creative with the person that you are trying to support or on your own on a regular basis. That's going to kind of cater to me um, just what your abilities are and, and things like that. Ten more seconds. And then I'm going to show this. Oh, that's so wonderful. So 46% of you say you do art more than once a week. And then it goes down. Either you're once a week or you're a couple times a month. Or not very often. About half and half. Very interesting. Okay, that's great. Um, just before I move forward, I don't want to forget to tell you guys about this. This... Does this come through right side up, Benjamin, or is it backwards? We can see it perfectly. We can oh, see it perfectly. wonderful. Okay, so this book was life-changing for me. Um, it's called The Creative Age, Awakening Human Potential in the Second Half of Life. Um, Dr. Jean Cohen was the first person that did research on um, the creative brain and regularly participating in art programming, good art programming, um, on a regular basis. And when you do participate with folks on a regular basis, oh good, I, I'm watching your text. Um, how it can change your brain and change your life. So I would, if you're, you guys are active in creating and uh, you would really like that book. Um, so anyway, now that I know that you guys are pretty regularly creative, I'd like to tell you another story. Um, you real quick, Lisa Ann had something she wanted to share with us. Great. I'm going to unmute you, Lisa Ann. Give me just a second here. Lisa Ann, are you there? Hi, I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so back to your art story. We have a resident who lives here currently, and she has a lot of behaviors. And we've never been able to find anything for her to do in activities or anything like that. Um, Lisa, one of our home office active living um, directors, she told me about sensory painting and with beads or clothespins and stuff like that. So we actually got this resident. We put her at a table with a couple other female residents. We put the paint in the bag. We put the bead on there. And I just said, see what comes out of the colors. She sat there for almost two hours. Oh! And it was families are crying. They were just so grateful that we were able to do that. And now she comes to our paint class every Wednesday in our courtyard. Oh, oh my gosh. That is wonderful. Yeah, we love, we love our residents here. We try anything to make them feel welcome. So. 
Well, I don't know how many buildings are on this call right now or how many people will eventually um, watch this, but I, I want to let you know that it, I love that Lisa shared that story because um, that comes up a lot. I get the phone call a lot and I would welcome any of your phone calls at any time if you have a behavior um, and you need to know how to mitigate it through art. I would love um, you to call me and, and for me to give you ideas of how to do that. I think, um, now did her behaviors end up getting better, Lisa Marie? Yes, she actually does not lash out anymore, nothing like that. Um, she does have her moments where she's agitated, but she doesn't, Sure. it's not as frequent as it was prior where we'd have them every day. She probably gets them maybe like once every two weeks now, and it's, they're very minor compared to the previous ones. Now, do you sit her... Do you sit her with someone else so that she can um, also like share in that moment with other people and, and gain friendships? Yeah, so she sits with a group of our female residents and they actually now call her our paint lady. Oh! They think it's so sweet that she sits there and will paint and then she'll even show it to them and they'll start painting. And she doesn't talk at all. She kind of talks yeah. all your Hallie talks. Yeah. Um, but she absolutely loves it. And it was like a really big, very big helpful thing for families because they wanted her to interact. And that was one thing to keep her here was able to do those paintings. So it was, it was very awesome. She used to be a, um, a great school teacher. Oh, that is so wonderful. So not only did you stop her behaviors, you gave her something to do that she's always loved. And you took it one step farther to give her purpose as a teacher again so that she now feels validated. She feels important. She feels like she's helping others. Like you changed her life through that. That's wonderful. Thank you. We, we love our resins. We, like I said, we try. Everyone has different little quirks and we try to go towards all of those. Absolutely. Well, if I can ever help you, if you ever run across somebody else that you need a little Kickstarter for, please feel free to, to reach out. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Any more, Benjamin? That's it right now. Go ahead and show us your next project. Okay, cool. So um, a lot of the times when I'm in a building, um, you know, like Megan what had been with Hallie for two years and thought that Hallie didn't participate. But sometimes family members will bring um, their, their mother or father into my classes and they'll have them sit on the periphery um, at the beginning of a class. And two years ago, I was at a building here. Uh, Hallie was in Minnesota, but I was here in Arizona. And we were doing a silk scarf making class. This is what they end up looking like. And, um, sorry, I don't iron. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, we were doing a silk scarf making class and that day I was actually training a brand new teacher. He had never ever taught seniors before. Um, so he was new and we were setting up for the class and a, a lovely little, um, lady was there with her daughter and the daughter came up to me and she said, Tina, I've seen your classes and I, I want to be there and I, I want to listen because you guys laugh and you joke and you act silly and you tell history and I just kind of want to be in the presence of you. My mom is on hospice. I really don't plan to have her much longer. She hasn't spoken in six months. She's gone downhill in every aspect of her life. Um, she's not really participating. She's nonverbal. She just kind of was a shell of herself. And we see that a lot. And she said, can I just sit here? And I said, no, but you can bring your mom up to the table and we can do art with her. And <laughs> the daughter was like, I don't, I don't think you understand. She's not going to do it. And I said, well, we never know unless we try it. So I probably put way too much pressure on my teacher, but you know, I, I encouraged him. And, and so the, the idea is you take this scarf and you tie these little things in it and you give them a Sharpie marker and they color, 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 color. 
Now, if you can imagine, you can't mess it up. There's no way you can do it. I mean, you can do dots, you can do stripes, you can do whatever you want. If you get it all over your hands, it's cool. You just use a little rubbing alcohol, you get it off, it's all good. So anyway, um, the little lady was at the table and Sean, my teacher, was going around and he came over to her and he put the scarf in her hand and he put the marker in the other hand. And then he kind of did hand over hand, which you all know is, you know, you kind of gently hold someone's hand and you direct them to do the project. And uh, so she was doing it and hand over hand. And then Sean finally realized that she was doing it on her own. And so he walked away. So sure enough, here she was doing her scarf, doing her scarf. Every so often she rotated it over and did another one. And the daughter was just in awe. And then all of a sudden she wanted help. And so for the first time in six months, she goes, Sean, and called his name. And this sounds, you know, so many people that aren't in this world don't even see that as a miracle, but it was. And the daughter starts crying and the lady's painting and Sean's like, oh my gosh. And the lady painted and painted and painted and painted. And at the very end, she had this beautiful scarf. Now, the best part of the story was, this lady was nonverbal, didn't move, sat in her wheelchair, didn't interact, nothing. Well, we took her scarf away because we do like a, a show and tell at the end of class. And we make sure that everybody loves their work. And we talk about the positives of everybody's piece. And we took her scarf and we put, her on, put it on another table to take a photograph. And that little lady, she got up, she wheeled herself over. She went and took her scarf. She wanted that back. And she even knew which one was hers. She reached way over and grabbed it. And the daughter was losing it. And, you know, we see our family members. We're so close to them sometimes. We're too close to them. I'm this way with my mom and my, my grandparents. And we think we know them. And we think we know what's in them. And, and that daughter had given up on her mom bef before that class. And after that class... Oh my God, it's like she had her mom back just for like 15 minutes, an hour and a half of our class. She had her mom back and it was amazing. So just like Lisa said, you know, um, I, de I developed Artsy Smartsy in a way that every single person, um, we teach a different medium every single month. So sometimes it's silk, sometimes it's paint, sometimes it's jewelry, sometimes it's mosaics. And it's always different because art is different for everyone. And... Um, this is very typical in a senior community. You'll have a color book and a lot of people just give them a color book and they give them crayons, which is a no-no. And they just tell them to do something. And uh, my next project is how I like to make art purposeful. And the other day I was in Minnesota and I, I walked around the corner. My dad was quietly reading and in his book, he had a bookmark just like this. And I had made that bookmark for him 20 years ago. And it was old and it was coming apart. It's all faded. But it was important to him. And I made that bookmark out of a color book. And so I have a color book uh, class where I have everybody color. And then they choose their favorite part. And they cut it out and they make a card out of it. And so here's a bunch of different ones. And right now, I know card making is huge right now, now that Hallmark, now that Hallmark's made a ton of money and they're not making cards anymore. Um, you guys can make cards and you have everything. And you can use colored pencils. You can use watercolor pencils. Those tools are amazing. If you don't have them, get some watercolor pencils. They're amazing. You just color like a regular color pencil and then you can turn it into a watercolor painting. Um, and then all you need is a bunch of, car a bunch of paper that are different sizes. So, you know, you take a big piece of paper, you fold it in half, you make it a card, you mount it with this, and then you mount it with your color page, and you have this really great card. So, you know, everybody, most people have that in their buildings. Um, I'm noticing that it's 1131. We're supposed to be done at 1130, which doesn't surprise me because I always talk too much. Um, this is another thing that you can make is a bookmark. Um, if you all have to leave, I thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm going to keep going because I got, I got one more really cool project to show you guys. But if you're leaving now, 
Um, maybe, should we put up that last poll to see, um, to see if anyone feels a little bit more comfortable doing art with their people um, after learning this? And I'm going to keep going. I have about another 10 minutes. If any of you guys want to see this last project, the last project is called Salty Salutations. I'm going to try to, this is one here. And this is one here. Oh, that's so great. That's wonderful. So a lot of you say, 50% um, of you said you feel more confident doing something creative with the person that you're supporting. That's wonderful. Oh, God. We're going to change the world together, folks. 10% um, said you think you do. And 40% say a little bit, but you want to learn more. Um, my website is www.artsysmartsyclass.com. Um, I would love to hear from all of you. I just made some custom color pages yesterday, and I have 15 of them um, that I can email you. And you can just, you can print them out on your computer um, and color forever. And they're really fun. Some of them are easier than others, depending on what the abilities are of your people that you're taking care of. But um, please reach out to me. I know Benjamin said that there is, um, there you go. Benjamin said that there is going to be something that he's sending to you. Benjamin, maybe could you jump in on this part on how they could reach me if they want more information? Are you sending something to them or with the, the, pay, the sheet that I made up yesterday? Yeah, so if you go to this um, address, put in your email, then Tina will be able to send you what she's going to talk about in a moment, the 15 pages you were talking about, the coloring pages that you've developed, um, as well as all her contact information, links to her YouTube videos and Facebook videos, that kind of thing. So feel free to go there and that way she can follow up with you with all that information. Awesome. That'd be really great. Should I do my last one or has everyone left us? Are they bored of us yet? 16 people on the call, so go ahead. Oh, good. Oh my gosh, good. Okay, so... This is my last one. I got to make this bigger. Okay. Um, so this is my last lesson. Isn't this one cool? Um, this is done with glue and salt. That's it. Um, let's see. I'm going to show you. I kind of did this step by step be beforehand so you can see it. But all you need is a bottle of glue, any kind, school glue. And go into your kitchen and steal the salt. You shouldn't be eating salt anyway, so this is a great way to use it. So I'm not sure, this part is hard to see, but there we go. So the first thing you do is get a nice, good piece of, uh, of paper. I use watercolor paper. You guys probably don't have watercolor paper, but use like a thick cardstock, or if you can order watercolor paper on Amazon, it would be awesome. Um, and you want to just design a design with glue. And while it's still wet, you got to have a bucket. I have all these buckets filled with stuff. Use like a big bucket, you know, and put the painting in the bottom of the bucket and sprinkle the salt over it. And salt is going to go everywhere. Just pour it on like the more the better. And then go in and shake it off and just go whoop really fast. You got to do it fast. Otherwise the glue gets everywhere. And then you're going to have this. You're, you got to let it dry for like a day. So you're going to have this salty, thick line. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your watercolor paint and you can get that at the dollar store too. Um, and you're going to just go in and one area at a time, you're going to add color. So I did my reds first. Here I added the polka dots next. And then after that, I went in and I did the background with a little bit lighter paint. And then at the very, very end, I added green. And then just like those um, color book cards I was showing you, all you gotta do is get some colored cardstock and get a nice big piece, fold it in half, 
mount it on here, take the one you just made, frame it on there, and then I always add like a little piece of ribbing because I think it's cute. Or I'll add um, glitter glue. This stuff is really great and you can get it, you got, most of you know this, but um, little things of glitter glue, you can get them at the dollar store if you want to. Um, I order mine where you can get tons of different colors, so that's fun. Um, and then I just use a glue stick to glue all the paper together. Um, you know, there's only over a hundred types of glues and most of the phone calls I get from my, um, activity people or care providers are what glue should I use for what product? It's really important. So for this particular thing, paper on paper, use a regular glue stick. Um, and then you have these beautiful cards and all you used was your glue and your salt. Um, the only negative is that you have to wait 24 hours to actually paint it. So um, you could get your people together, the person you're caring for, make a whole bunch of these one day and, you know, make 20 of them and then let them dry. And then you have them all ready to, to paint at a later time. So just kind of break it up into, into parts. Um, and then um, that's about the last lesson I have to share with you. On my website, I have dozens and dozens and dozens of art kits that I sell, um, including the fabric wreath class. Um, the fabric wreath is another thing that you can do at home. Um, I just cut up everything. You can cut up towels, sheets, curtains, clothing, jeans. I make a really good 4th of July wreath by cutting up blue jeans and then using like red bandana or like a red colored shirt or something and then white. Um, adding tulle, this is called tulle, this light stuff. Um, really makes your wreath pop. So that's a great thing. Um, I have these kits where the fabric's already cut up. So if you want to get by kits, you can do that. But otherwise, if you're at home and you just want to cut, 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 you know, put at least seven or eight different types of fabric in each of your wreaths because it makes it look really pretty. And then I don't know, you can put an ornament in the center. You can put anything you want in the center um, before you hang it. And then I just put a suction cup on my window and then you can hang it by a suction cup or you can hang it on a door or, um, you know, however you want to do it. But fabric wreath making is really, really easy at home because we all have so many things. We're always recycling fabric wise, um, especially right now. We're all cleaning out our drawers and that's a great way to use fabric. Um, does anyone out there have any questions, Benjamin? I could talk forever, but I know you guys have to like work or something. Well, I do. I'm curious. So the metal, do you just take like a piece of straight metal and bend it? Or do you thank have to you. Specifically? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I skipped that part. You're going to love the answer. Do you guys see that movie, Mommy Dearest? Some of you are too young to know that movie. You shouldn't have wire hangers in your closet. They're bad for your clothes, but they're good for art. So cut up your wire hanger, cut the, the hooky part off your wire hanger, get some duct tape, turn it into a circle, overlap it, and then, I don't know if you can see it, but you just duct tape that on there on both sides, and then make your wreath as big or as small as you want. Um, I like it at least this big. That's got to be maybe 10 inches or something um, so that you just really have enough space for the fabric. So good question, Benjamin. Thank you. Yeah. And then the scarf, what were you tying into the scarf? Like, oh, was you can tie anything. Um, you'll never find what I use, but sometimes uh, I've had people use poker chips. Those are good. Um, I recycle everything. So I have things that you don't have. Um, but yeah, you can put poker chips in there. It has to be something that's plastic. That's not going to soak up the paint. So make sure it's something that's plastic or, I mean, maybe even wood would work, but don't use like cardboard or anything like that. Gotcha. And then you just tie it with a rubber band. Is yeah. Yeah. It's just a rubber band. And then, um, you know, all of those, I have a kit. If you like this, this is one of my, um, most favorite lessons and we sell these in kits at 10 and they have 10 scarves they have all the knobbies they have all the rubber bands they have all the directions it has everything you need to make 10 silk scarves 
Do you know that I have ladies from 10 years ago, I still teach the same people, and they still have their silk scarves on their walkers. They just are so proud of them. So, no. yeah, no. they're so cute. They have them on their walkers or on their little baskets or on their purse. I call them an accessory scarf because they're tiny. But my little grandma, let's see. Oh, see, she has one on here. My little grandma always wore a little teeny silk scarf right here. So that's why I started doing those scarves. That is so cool. Well, Tina, yeah. your energy is infectious. I hate doing art, but after this class, I'm like, I'm ready to do something. Oh, I God. <laughs> Try some of this stuff. I'm so telling you, you, that's wonderful. I love seeing that poll that you all are more... Um, feel more confident to do art with the people around you. If you do, you will change lives. So don't worry about being the best at it. Don't worry about if you're an artist or not an artist. Just try something creative and watch the miracles happen because they will, I promise you. Beautiful. Hey, thank you so much, Tina. We'll get everybody who goes to livingwellevents.org slash insights. Your, your, um, you said it was a free downloadable coloring book for adults is that correct absolutely it's i'm just gonna send you a pdf and it has 15 pages of color pages and you can just print them out on your on your printer wonderful well hey thank you to everyone who has joined our event today and thank you especially to tina we appreciate you and we'll see you online tina thank you benjamin bless you all bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. How do you think it went, Benjamin? <laughs>